Hi there. Welcome again to the Ivory Tower Collections. Today, we're going to talk about this giant beautiful beast right here. This is an Atari 5200 Super System, released in the early 80s as the successor to the original Atari 2600. Now, the 5200 uh, has basically the components inside of it. Uh, it's kind of a combination of the Atari 400 and 800 computer systems. And it was a quick way for Atari to quickly get a competing console out on the market to compete primarily against the ColecoVision and as well as the Intellivision so that uh, they could regain some of the market share because at the time those two consoles were starting to steal some of their thunder from the Atari 2600 release because they had better graphics and sound capability. In any event, the 5200, like most of Atari's consoles back then, was strictly an RF-only output device. And this is a customer 5200 sent to me to get audio video modded. I have most of the work inside already done and prepped with the exception of two additional components that I need to install that I had been waiting for. And in this video, I'm going to go through the process I use for installing those. And uh, those modules are a lovely Atari uh, Ultimate Video Board, or UAV, which we'll see if my camera will, there we go, focus in on. And this is one of the pre-assembled boards. The other ones I've shown you in the past, like in my 7800 video, were not pre-populated. And that's because these boards have to be set up and configured a little bit differently when you use them on the Atari 8-bit computer type systems, of which, again, the 5200, if my camera will refocus there, because it's not, there we go, um, of which the 5200 largely has the Atari 8-bit components inside. In addition to the UAV board to correct or to add a composite and S video out to the 5200, I'm going to be also installing one of these little guys. I don't know if that will focus. There we go. And this is a really tiny board. This will be a challenge for me, honestly. This is called the Audio Companion Board and is also designed by the same engineer and is used as a uh, internal mixer and balancer for audio outputs. And my camera's really having a hard time there because it's so far back. It has to be. The 5200 is a huge system. For, for those that might not know, um, <laughs> that little UAV, the UAV board itself is not very large, maybe about an inch and a half by about an inch, or just shy of two inches by an inch. And that's the uh, UAV sitting here on the 5200. And then the audio companion board next to it on the opposite side is really small. Maybe about a half inch by three quarters, if so. So yeah, very small items to be installed on a very large console. Now again, I've already taken this unit apart. I've already done quite a few modifications to it, which uh, I'll be more than happy to show you uh, once I take the cover off. So yeah, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to pause here, zoom in a little bit more on the system board details, and show you where these components are going to get installed. Hi there. Welcome back again to the Ivory Tower Collections. Um, okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about this 5200 for a little bit. Now, the uh, purpose is to get a universal or uh, ultimate Atari video chip installed into this thing. And the procedures as written up by Brian have a couple of different ways of doing this. But after some trial and error with this 5200, um, I have to make a couple of changes. Anyway, so you've got two basic ways to do this. You can install it with the 4050 uh, video buffer in place or without. If you have a socketed 5200 and you don't need RF, then Brian advises that you can actually install the UAV without the need for the 4050 by simply removing the 4050 chip from here, from the socket here, and you can install it directly into where the 4050 used to be. The other thing that's required if you do that is that there is a jumper that you'll have to install across R2 and R3's resistors up here by the uh, 
7805 regulators. Now you'll see that I've got this ginormous uh, jumper here. I'm not leaving this in place and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. I actually had this in here as a temporary when I was trying to work on some things. So that's the basic plan is that, you know, the easiest installation is to get the fully populated version of the Atari or the Ultimate Atari video board from Brian, remove the 4050 socket, pop it in place, wire everything where it needs to go to the various uh, connection points on the green solderless terminal header here and uh, yeah and call it good however that doesn't seem to work for this 5200 nope this 5200 is uh, very picky it will not work at all without a 4050 in it so I'm gonna have to rethink the process a little bit now as it turns out the owner of this particular board doesn't care about the RF at all so if I really wanted to I could just remove the entire RF modulator out of here. I've already removed the coax cable that used to be in here when I did the uh, power modification to it. Um, but I tend to usually like to keep the RF shields in place. Number one, it's part of the original hardware still. And um, you know, it, it does help to not only keep interference that the machine might create, from interfering with other devices, but it can also prevent other devices from interfering with the console. Um, and while that may seem like yeah, it doesn't really matter in today's digital world, well, actually it does because we use we tend to use a lot more RF uh, signals wirelessly now than we ever did when these machines were first invented in the 80s. Back then, pretty much the only thing you had to worry about was just uh, you know just your over-the-air TV signals. Things like cellular communications and our Wi-Fi routers and, and all of that didn't exist back then. Now it does. So I've got a couple of options and I have to decide what I want to do on this. The, the main option or one thing I could do is to take his uh, 4050 chip and actually take a socket, which Brian does include an extra socket. IC socket with the uh, kit and actually solder the socket on top of the 4050 chip. I'm just going to take it out of the uh, anti-static here for a second, or out of the foam rather. Kind of wedge these two together a little bit if I can. Well, not really, it won't fit. But basically, you know, solder the socket on top of the 4050. That will allow you to plug the 4050 back into its original socket. And then essentially you plug the UAV on top of the socket that you soldered on top of the 4050. And that will work, but it also makes this thing as tall as the Los Angeles Police Department tower in the new Blade Runner movie if I do that. So, additionally, if you, if you have all that attached, uh, the UAV board now sits too high for the RF shielding to fit back in place. So the only other option I've really got here, and it's going to require a little more work, it also makes this installation much more permanent, is to desolder the original socket the 4050 sat in, solder the, one of the new sockets on top of the 4050, just like I would in the tower, the Los Angeles Police Department tower I was talking about, and once I have all that together, just solder the 4050 directly into the board that will drop you know a couple of millimeters off of the height of the uh, assembly if I do that so it just depends I know the original owner of this doesn't care about the RF that means technically I don't need to put the shield back on but like I said the shield is part of the original kit as it were so we'll just have to see I might have to uh, contact the owner and see if they care about the RF shield or not and go from there so yeah I'll let you know what my decision is in a little bit. Okay, I'm back. So here's what my decision is to do on this. So basically I'm going to, I'm reconstructing the UAV a tiny bit. Uh, there's a couple of ways you can do this, but I'm trying to slim it down, make it as low profile as possible while also um, not having to create a ton of work uh, because this the UAV is a tiny board so it can be difficult to do any real soldering work on it if you're going to try to rearrange things so here's what I basically did let me show you the standard UAV and hopefully my camera will focus in on this there we go now you can see the UAV has a row of jumpers on the top of it 
And that's fine and dandy, except that what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount a socket, one of the sockets that came with the UAV. Here, let's see if the camera will focus back in again. So I'm going to take one of these sockets and I need to solder it on top of the row of pins here, but on the top side of the board. By doing that, I would then be able to plug the 4050 on top of this. Now the trick to this is two things. One is that these jumpers are sitting too tall for me to successfully solder the socket onto this. So that's problem number one is how to get rid of these tall pins. Well you could, from the bottom side of the board, desolder it, but it's so small you can't really get a desoldering iron in there and even getting some wick in there to, to get the pins out could be difficult. In fact, it'd probably be even easier just to desolder all of these machine pin headers instead to get to it. I came up with a slightly better, well I don't know if it's better, but this was the solution that I went with and I'll show that now with the other board. So here's the other board. Now what I did was is I took my side, my flush cutters, my side cutters, and I cut all of the pins off the top of the standoffs here, as close as I could. And even if there's a little bit sticking up, it's not a problem because once I put the socket on here, there will be more than enough room height-wise for that to fit. See, there's plenty of room for that to sit down there and fit. And then I'll still be able to plug the 4050 on top of it and keep a fairly low profile. Now. That begs the question, what do we do about the jumpers that were required? Well, I saw where another Atari Age forum member had basically rebuilt this board by moving the jumpers to the bottom of this board, but they are also kind of tall, and while they would fit, it would require you to have to desolder these original headers. So I came up with a slightly less elegant, but I think easier solution, and that is that I just very carefully put my soldering iron in the middle and just soldered across the pins that needed to be jumpered. This way it's incredibly low profile and you could fairly remove this fairly easily by just you know heating up the iron and just kind of wick it back off of there with the iron. Um, so this way I've essentially got the jumpers in place where I need them to be and I've got room on top to install a socket to put the 4050 on it and then the rest of these pins will just plug into the original socket on the 5200. So that's my plan. So I'm going to speed this next section up here because what I'm going to do now is zoom the camera in while I attempt to uh, try to solder the socket on here. I'm not going to lie, it's very close uh, quarters where this needs to solder with SMD components as well especially a resistor or a tiny capacitor I see over here, could, could be a problem. Um, so we'll see. I mean, I may not be that successful at this, but what I'm going to try to do is I think if I put the pins on the inside instead of on the outside, then what I might be able to do is heat them up from up above and hopefully get the thing hot enough that the solder below will melt and then want to attach to it. But to make sure that's more successful, I'm actually going to add more solder to these pins. I've already done it on this side of here, and I'm just going to add more solder to these pins here. And uh, so we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to put this on my helping hands and uh, give it a shot, as it were. Try to get this bent down and zoom this in while I do the solder work.
I think we're good there. And I don't know if it was obvious when I was soldering this or not, but I am wearing a uh, anti-static wrist strap because I was handling all the little parts on this board and these are my little metal pieces here I clipped off with my flush cutters off the top of the header pins. So, now it's just a matter of essentially plugging it all back into the 5200 to see what we get. And since I've got this sitting out, it'll be a lot easier to go ahead and reinsert the 4050 uh, back into this and you have to make sure you orient it properly I did make sure that the notched end of the socket faces the way it did in the original uh, motherboard mount so pin one is over here and uh, so yeah let me get the 4050 plugged in that way that's done and out of the way Okay, looks like that's in. Make sure it's seated in there good. Yep. Okay, so the 4050 is in place, and now you can see that the total height of the board, if the camera will focus in, there we go. So the 4050 does stand up a little bit, but it won't stand up as tall when the whole thing's put together. So I think there'll be enough clearance uh, for the RF shield to go back in place. So that's what we're gonna do now. Here's the 5200 board again. Here's the socket, the original socket that the 4050 was in. And here is the assembled kit so we should just be able to just pop it right back in place just like that yeah that's not standing up very tall at all actually that's uh, I don't know if I can really get that on camera well to show the angle but it only stands up maybe about an inch total in height off the board and uh, that's just gonna make it just a tiny bit taller oh no actually it's not as tall as this uh, winding coil is here so it's actually a little shorter than that and i know for a fact that when the rf shielding is back in place this is actually just the, the top of this is still below the rf shield a little bit so that should work just great so now i can reattach all these tiny little wires where they need to go so let's get my tiny pliers out. Okay, this first wire that's being inserted and installed is the chroma or the color wire. Sorry, the color burst, oh, that didn't attach. Um, the color burst wire from the GTA. I believe, which is this chip right here. Okay, that's in place, awesome. So the next one is my ground, then my chroma, then my luma. Okay, so my ground wire here should be this gray one, if I'm not mistaken. So that goes in next, just like that. Tighten that up. Good. And then my chroma wire, which I believe is my red wire here. So get that. Put in. Loosen this terminal block a little bit more. There we go. Screw that down. And then should be the Luma. Yes, which is my yellow wire here. Of course, you can use whatever color wires you want. This just happens to be what I basically had on hand that were different colors, so I could keep track of what was what. Okay, so those three are in. 
it's nicely arranged. Move that off to the side. Of course, part of the problem that now that I think about this is the RF shielding has to go back in place. So I'm going to have to cut out a notch in the shielding to allow for these cables to go through. Okay, so... This is my chroma wire right here. And... That was next? Yes, that is next. Or, I'm sorry, not chroma, my composite. So... Just goes right in there. Get that tightened up. Okay, that's in place. Excellent. Took all these out of the way a little bit. Okay. And that should be all of the wiring completed and set up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and test this thing real quick uh, before I attach the audio board. Okay, so I was successful. Uh, this is working. However, I did make a rookie mistake that I'm going to show you. And I do mean rookie because it always you always have to pay attention. So the original instructions for the uh, UAV installation from Brian says that if you remove the 4050 chip and just use the UAV by itself, you have to make sure that you jumper R2 and R3. Well, I had a jumper on R2 and R3. I had forgot to remove it. So when I first fired this thing up, I still didn't have a picture and uh, I had a small, you know, heart attack in the process. Uh, thinking, man, you know, I just can't catch a break with this thing. But nope, it was because I left that jumper in place. Once I removed it, I was uh, good to go. So. I now have a uh, fully functional 5200 here. Uh, it's working just fine as far as uh, good, excellent picture quality, actually. In fact, I'm going to try to move this camera over so that you can see the uh, quality of the S video picture that's up and running right now. There we go. So it's definitely working on S vid. And again, you can't really tell on the camera here, and I apologize, but the colors do look really, really good. The reds are nice and sharp there. That yellow along the bottom is, is looks good. So, yeah, I'm happy with this. Um, yeah, now I just need to get the audio board put in, so that'll be the next mission. Okay, so the next task is to get the audio circuit completed. Now, the old method of doing this was basically to just... Uh, uh, attach a wire off of one of the resistor points down here and basically attach it to like a 10 microfarad 16 volt capacitor and run that out to the RCA jacks and that's actually how my 5200 is wired up because that was the old method but with uh, the advent of more modern technology Brian has invented a way of creating a more balanced board <clears throat> um, utilizing what we call the UAV, or I'm sorry, the UAC. I need to rephrase that. The UAC. Now, the UAC is, uh, stands for uh, Ultimate Audio Companion, and I've got them in here in this little bag. I think I showed them earlier. I've got three of them. They're really, really small. Um, I'll see if I can get the camera to zoom in. There we go. So that's my thumb. That's my thumbnail, and that's the UAC. So you can see that the UAC is about the size of my thumbnail. So it's it's a pretty tiny little board, but the installation for it is actually quite simple. So all you really need to do is Brian has designed it so that you just have to solder it to. A positive and negative off of uh, several decoupling or uh, filter capacitors that are installed on the 5200 and that makes the installation for it much easier now once the board is soldered in place what you need to do is run a couple of wire leads off of it so in this particular case it needs to basically be soldered 
to about here. I know you can't really see that on the camera, so once I get this put in, I'll just have to show you guys where I'm installing it. But I don't have a ton of room, so I'm gonna have to move that capacitor over just a little bit. Okay, good. And then you need to make sure you get the positive and the negatives set up. One goes to ground. The other one goes to, again, like a positive five volt source. And if you're not sure which one's the ground off the capacitors, uh, the good news is, is that most of the negative leads on capacitors are tied to ground. So again, if you just get a meter, put it in continuity slash diode mode, then I'm just going to touch any ground here. There's plenty of it around the board and touch this side right here. There we go. There's my, there's my ground. It's actually shared with that. So there's my ground and that's going to be my positive five volts in this case, I believe it is. So I'm just going to have to solder that uh, UAV right across here. And the same thing applies because the UAV is going in place. We're going to have a small issue with routing the wires. Now, as it turns out, my audio output wire is not going to be that big a deal because uh, I actually am going to have it all fully self-contained. This is my audio output wire right here, ready to go. I just need to trim it up once I get the board in place. But with the shielding reinstalled and with that moved over there, that's going to be a little more difficult. I'm wondering if there's somewhere else on the board we might be able to install it, but uh, I'm not sure. The other thing we need is I still need to provide it with a, with a um, audio input line. And uh, easiest uh, source for that is actually not too far away at all. It's uh, off of resistor number 50 off the north leg of it, which is actually just right, get something to point with. Here we go. This is, our, this is resistor 50 right here. So all I got to do is just attach a wire lead from off of this side of it to the uh, audio companion board. Just sit right over there. And if I give it enough wire, I might just be able to kind of squish it under the shielding. This is actually this is actually the wire that comes with the UAV, <laughs> but I'm gonna use this for my audio wire because it's, it's good. It's a separate color from everything else. It'll stand out and it's fairly thick, so should do good. So I'm gonna trim some of this off so I can get it ready to wrap around there and uh, solder it up. Okay. Get this twisted up. And I'm going to probably need to get some... Oh, actually, I guess I was lying before when I said I didn't need solder anymore. I do, don't I? Yes, I do. These boards don't attach themselves. <clears throat> All right, so first I'm going to apply a little more solder to everything that needs to where it's going to go. So I'm going to go ahead and add some solder to the uh, north leg of this resistor number 50. There we go. Good. And then I'm also going to go ahead and add some additional solder to that capacitor where the uh, companion board will install. So, it's going to take a little more heat because this is a larger surface area. There we go. That finally attached. Okay. So I've got some additional solder added there. Okay, uh, let's see here. I might go ahead and tin up the end of this wire a little bit. And I had a tiny little bit spill on the board just now, so I need to get that little bead off of there. There we go. Get that tossed out of the way. And I'm going to put this into a little loop. Give myself like a little hook for that wire, just like that. And then just kind of feed it up. There 
There we go. Take my pliers and just kind of squish it on there. And then hit this with some fresh heat again since I've already got solder in place that will help to get it all melted in and mixed up. There we go. Good. That's not going anywhere. And then I'll cut off my excess wire or the excess bit I got there on top. There we go. Get that out of the way. And it's a nice solid connection. Yep. And I don't need very much wire because once I get this audio companion board installed, roughly right about What if it'd be easier to put on that side of it? Eh, well, we'll see. Okay, so the UAC, the UAC audio companion board is now installed. Now we just need to get the rest of the audio in place. good should be all right now the real test is do I have audio so that'll be the next test and smoke test believe it or not it's supposed to sound like that that's the little alien jumping on the screen on the Gorf title screen yeah I'd say we have audio Cool. We're good. All right. Well, what I'm going to do at this point is uh, pretty much just let this thing burn in for a while, make sure there's no problems with it. And while that's going on, I will probably uh, figure out where I need to trim the metal shielding because it's pretty thick stuff. Luckily, I've got some tin snips out in my garage, but. Uh, yeah, it's going to be kind of tricky. Actually, I've already got it figured out for the wiring here. I've already taken care of that. So that's that's not a problem. But I wasn't thinking about the audio board. So I would either have to squish it in place, which I really would rather not do, or just uh, cut away the shielding there. So that's probably what I'll opt to do. I'll probably just cut away the shielding. Uh, probably from about here to here. That's about the area where the audio board occupies the location space. So, yep, yeah, that's what I'll do. Just cut out a little notch section out of here and uh, give it my best. So, there we are. I'll be back to show you the final results. <laughs> 